এ পর্বের অতিথি নেপালের ন্যাশনাল ব্যাংকিং ইনস্টিটিউটের প্রধান কর্তা ব্যক্তি একই সাথে তিনি এশিয়া প্যাসিফিক অ্যাসোসিয়েশন অব ব্যাংকিং ইনস্টিটিউটের বর্তমান চেয়ারম্যান ব্যাংকার হিসেবে কর্মজীবন শুরু করলেও পরবর্তীতে শিক্ষাবিদ হিসেবে থাইল্যান্ড এবং নেপালে বড় ভূমিকা রাখছেন সঞ্জীব সুবা Sanjib, welcome in Dhaka. I'm excited. Uh, you're the first Nepali who are in iStyle. Uh, thank you so much. Really appreciate your welcome and great to be at the ISO. Looking forward to it. You're here to attending regional banking conference. Uh, tell us something about more. I mean, this is a great initiative taken by the Bangladesh Institute of Bank Management. And uh, they've invited us as a co-organizer. Uh, four countries are here now together with the Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal and India. We're discussing a lot of different areas from the banking industry, challenges and opportunities. So a lot of knowledge sharing. And thanks to your governor, Dr. Fazli Kabir, so who was here, Central Bank Governor, and he motivated us to you know, uh, share more and learn from each other. So it is a really great uh, program that's going on right now here in Dhaka. So I'm talking with a banker or an academician? Yes, I started as a, uh, my career started as a banker. Um, uh, in a bank called Greenlays, which is now acquired by Stan C. So I'm very blessed to st actually start, have started my career as a banker because that allowed me to, you know, bring a lot of discipline, a lot of, uh, you know, governance, a lot of prudency uh, in me. And then uh, actually after doing banking for about 10 years and then decided to completely switch over and move to a brand new university they were starting in uh, Thailand. So that was a quite an interesting journey because I like the idea. Uh, perhaps that was in me. I wanted to take a new challenge, new risk. So we were the part of the team to start the Webster University in Thailand from day one. And then uh, I did that for about 11 years and decided to again come back to Nepal with National Banking Institute. So when you, I looked at the, you know, uh, that NBI, when it was incorporated, the job was kind of perfectly designed for me. It looked like because uh, of the my both the banking and the academic background. You said you love to take the challenges every time. Right. So is it something you have got it from your father? Because your father was a soldier family, and your mom, uh, she's from a priest family. Uh, actually, it looks like you know I had some this DNA in me that wanted to challenge the status quo. Okay. You know, always question why, who am I, and what am I doing here? What could I do better? So these are the stuff, you know, so status quo maintaining is not me. I'm not the kind of person who would sit in my comfort zone. Maybe perhaps a risk taker, perhaps want very inquisitive as a person, very curious as a person. So on the go, my journey is kind of on the learning curve all the time. I'm learning all the time. Since you went out of the box and you said you are a banker right. and you teach the bankers too. So are you saying a banker can test the risk and he can go to the out of the box. We as a banker and the banking industry thrives only on risk. That is the only expertise we have actually. And even I go on the record saying the only product that we have is a risk. So this is the kind of the challenge that I ask my banker, like you know, delegates and participants to always uh, reflect on. The financial industry is evolving. It is getting very dynamic. It is, has always been dynamic. It is evolving. It is transforming. It is changing. If you this say, they sit in a comfort zone for a long time, they will be outdated. They will be dinosaur. You know, so this is where they need to challenge themselves. They need to take more prudent stuff, you know, come out of their comfort zone. So this is what it is. So tell us something about the Nepal economy. Uh, Nepal economy is a very small GDP we have at the moment. It's only about $26 billion. Uh, but perhaps that has to do with the kind of the political statement that we had for last over almost 10, 15 years. And then the, finally the new constitution was uh, drafted and in place. But since last three months, a lot of good signals are coming up. The elections has taken place, the local body, the state government and the federal government, the central government. So the new bodies are in place, elected body. And then we hope now moving forward, we will grow at least minimum six to seven percent, minimum. 
and uh, double digit growth i can expect at least within two 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 and a half year i can expect uh, double digit growth year on year so can i take the privilege to give a round to bbm campus sure would love to do that amra jeta dekhechi ei sommelone je tader regulation kintu onek strong regulation strong ebong etar proyog o khubi strong hoy खूब स्ट्रंगलि ता प्रयोग कर ह्यूमैन कैपिटल डेवलपमेंट संजीव और तरह दल निश्चय खूब चमत्कार भाव कन्ट्रिव्यूट कर टू मेनटेन दिस रिजनेबलि लो लेवल अफ नन परफर्मिंग लोन मन करी जो नेपाल सह जरा अन्य पार्टिसिपेंट आज एक्सपिरियन्सगुलो समस्यागुलो एड्रेस कर क्षेत्र में व्यवहार करतेब I've been working in the banking sector for the last three decades, and we always believe that uh, we need a training center, training uh, institute, where our people can be educated, uh, and our people can be trained, and then our people can talk in the same language. And then we needed very good CEO, very good CEO who could manage uh, this institution. We all of us thought that you know we would br bring someone, some foreigner. to manage this company that is that is why it was a global ad and he applied and he got selected and he's doing excellent excellent job he's making difference in uh, training our people so both sanjeev and uh, nbi are uh, respectable na names in the in our country he is a man with integrity and he is a man with positive attitude when you look at his facebook comments and post he always talks about positive things about banking sector what are the lackings there and how we can improve it and he deals with people in a very uh, polite manner he always thinks of something new so he is a man with integrity honesty and rule of law he follows corporate governance and he conducts so many programs about leadership and corporate governance that way he wants to contribute to the country in fact he had got better offers elsewhere but he decided to come back to the country and contribute so that itself shows his positive attitude toward the country and toward the human being nepal a neighboring country your npl rate is less than 2% how come culturally nepali people would not like to default and then the process is once you default you become a defaulter your photo comes in the newspaper that is a major social stigma and then many people have gone to jail including the chairman of the bank has been sent to the jail in my country if you are uh, office bearer of the politics you are not allowed to sit in the board okay. so member of parliament or like you know these people are not allowed to sit in the board we only have seven board member that is directed by the regulator i think you have about 15 board member here in the country yeah, right. so the less number means less problem uh, less opinion differences so from the different promoter groups so and when they default uh, the uh, the regulator take their passport back so they cannot travel the defaulter cannot travel outside <laughs> yes and then uh, you know lot of uh, these issues and it is a uh, uh, social prestige also comes down so we need to be more mindful this is where i talk, uh, talked about you know coming out of the status quo challenge the status quo what can we do better now we will be done better much better you know so this is where the regulator has really worked the reform process has really worked and then the whole stakeholder really supported you know and uh, because they also borrower also need to understand they need to grow not by the default by but by the prudence by the you know following the ethical business practices and another interesting part is year on year you have around 25% growth in banking how did it happen uh we still think the 28 commercial banks are uh, last number for the economy size of the 1 to 26 uh, billion dollar gdp uh we are working to kind of make more consolidation so year on year growth is the more opportunities are coming up now all right the political uh, kind of the crisis is now out the entrepreneurship ecosystem is working very thriving actually very vibrant now and uh, it is uh, expected so this is where the banks are seeking more opportunity 
and that is the result of the growth. We have had in last two years, banks were asked to increase their paid up capital by four times. For example, the commercial banks had the paid up capital only 2 billion Nepali rupees. Now they were asked to bring to 8 billion Nepali rupees and it's already been done. Large number of banks have already made the capital. Those banks, they did not make the capital, had to go through the merger process. So that really brought the number down. And uh, so the, when the number brought down, the capital went up, and this is where and the economic were expanding, the business opportunity was coming, so the banking banks are seizing the opportunity now. We have Bangladesh investment there too in banking sector, and you have a bank named Nepal Bangladesh Bank. How it is doing? This bank is doing very well. I mean, it went through its own set of challenges uh, in the early times. But last, I think, five, six years, the bank has really transformed very, very well. I think it's brought in new investor as well, uh, the bank from Bangladesh. So the bank uh, has been able to contain the uh, previous issues uh, very, very smartly and very well. So that was the bank at one point of time, about 10 years or 11 years back, that was the first bank was on the bank on the run. But the new leadership, new people came in and they handled it very effectively. And most importantly, our regulator, you know, like uh, took the very, like, you know, prompt decisions and uh, took the bank through a lot of corrective actions. So it is now in a very good shape, very good hand. If any Bangladeshi investors would like to go to Nepal to invest, what should be the topic, what should be the subject they should look into? The use, the economy is, you know, growing such rapidly, the Bangladeshi investor would find a lot of opportunity, no doubt about it. I mean, there's so many sectors, now there's a lot of Chinese investment is also coming, the huge Indian investment is here, like, you know, there's a pocket investment from the US and then European countries are also coming in. You know, so in service sector, hospitality, you know, like, um, I mean, uh, even the medical sector is a growing sector in Nepal. The education sector is a growing sector in Nepal. Like when you talk about the service uh, kind of stuff and the, even the IT, a lot of outsourcing IT and the software production is happening in Nepal for the overseas market. You know, so these are the very, and the Nepalese talents, Nepalese youth are highly talented actually. One, they are bilingual. You know, the medium of uh, uh, instruction at the school level is in English. So they are very proficient in the language and they are very smart, very internet savvy. They are like 21st gen kind of the kids we have in the country. Uh, what they need is uh, more opportunity to work with the, you know, multinational uh, kind of the environment. So given the kind of the population that we have, the youth population, we are blessed with the youth population and very smart population and very hardworking population and the kind of the proximity that Nepal has, no other country can even imagine that we are sitting between two giant economies of the world, China and India. These are the market dominant. You know, and uh, other country envious, perhaps. And yes, they should, because we are into the middle of that, these two economies. So any FDI coming would have the advantage of business and economic opportunity with the, both the country. So that is one beauty of the country. You do mentorship with the Nepali young crowd uh, who would like to be the entrepreneur. Tell us something for Bangladeshi young crowd. Yes, I mean, uh, I always, uh, you know, thrived on working with the young population because they keep on challenging me. The kind of the questions, the kind of issues they raise are very interesting and I get to learn a lot. So for my message to the youth, all right, you are a new generation kid, you are into 21st century, but there's no shortcut to the success. You need to have passion for anything that you do. And you need to work anything on a very religiously, you know, and then um, uh, work smart. The work smart does not mean that you don't work hard. Working hard means you might be working hard, but not being productive, not being efficient. So try to figure out how can I be efficient? And at least to understand what is efficiency. Efficiency means from my perspective, speed and accuracy. Make less error, and the moment you make error, learn from it. Fail. Until 35, you are allowed to fail. You know, I mean, uh, whatever profession you try to do, you know, take up, whether entrepreneur or like, you know, regular employee or whatever, be best at it, be good at it, but you must enjoy it. Success is not how much money you made and how many cars parked in your 
you know, parking lot or what kind of bungalow you have. I don't consider that a success. I have met many millionaire people that were happy in life. You need to be internally happy. What makes you happy? Of course, you have to pay your bill. That's a practically part of it. But at the same time, you don't want to have a dog's life, feeling insecure, feeling not happy, you know, always under the, you know, threat, and then you are still making money, sorry. Success is not how much, like, you know, what kind of million dollar uh, sits in your bank account, or what Mercedes or Rolls Royce or Jaguar you drive. No, sorry, it's not that. Success is, are you happy? Sanjeev, dhanyabad and very better wala. Amdad, bhalo basi to I style dosok, dhanyabad. আমরাও চাই একুশ শতকের একজন তরুণ সে উদ্যোক্তা হোক কিংবা প্রফেশনাল সে অ্যাকিউরেট থাকবে সে স্পিড নিয়ে কাজ করবে এবং সবচেয়ে ইম্পর্টেন্ট নিজের মানসিক শান্তি নিয়ে কাজ করবে পরের পর্বে অন্য কোনো অতিথিকে নিয়ে দেখা হবে টিল দেন আই উইশ ইউ ভেরি গুড উইক গুড বাই